Live from Shadowmere Mirror Studios, it's Talkie Box, where ladies drink free. Welcome to Talkie Box, everybody. Mm, Justin, go get us some free drinks. Yeah, pretend to be a lady for a little bit and get, get us those drinks. I'm, I'm the bartender. I'm the one with the hair. I guess I should probably do it. All right, he's yeah, the probably bartender. you. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so uh, I guess introductions on our very first episode of Talkie Box. Very first episode. Good God, oh, it's exciting. I, I'm thrilled. It's I'm thriller <laughs> like MJ. Yeah, that's right. No, it's not. That's no. absolutely not right. Anyway, so uh, Dave is is my name, and then uh, with me as always, two of my very closest people that are also on this show. Uh, we have uh, Justin. Hey, how's it going? I'm Justin, and we have Jason, and he means close by proximity. Right, I'm Jason. Yeah, we're not not friendly at all. Today on Talkie Box, what are we talking about? We're talking about things. Yeah, I think we got also a few stuff. subjects. Yeah. I mean, now we we did talk uh, last time. On our first episode, early, earlier today, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the future tech of cars. Today we're going to do a little bit of future tech of video games. Video right? game future tech. Yeah, it's a it's a it's an exciting subject. Absolutely. We're also going to talk about uh, dreams. We're going to get a little introspective today and talk about some dreams. Mm. What they mean to you. What you mean to me. I had a dream that we were actually going to talk about dreams. Somebody else had a dream once. Yeah. Who? Uh, some guy. Somebody did. Some, and, uh, somebody. We're also going to talk about uh, Halloween costumes today. Yes. Some some good ones, some bad ones, some sexy ones, maybe. Oh, yeah. I know there have been a few for me. Sultry. This sounds like it's going to be a good first episode of Talkie Box. Every first episode of Talkie Box is a good first episode of Talkie Box, especially the first episode, That's which true. is right now. That's true. we got we got to set the bar low on the first episode so that every episode continues to be greater. Right. Yes. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and move right into our first ever episode of Talkie Box. That's right. Future tech of video games. What do we got? So um, I think... I got an Xbox 360. Yeah. That's what I got. I also have an Xbox 360. I have a, a PlayStation 4. That's because Justin is an elitist asshole. Eli- that's <laughs> what PlayStation 4s are about. That's yeah. exactly... They, they market specifically to the elitist asshole in all of us. Right. And... It, Mostly in Justin. Well, right. It, it works on me, too. <laughs> well, I do have an iPhone. Uh, oh. Oh, wow. I'm over here with a Windows phone being somewhat Just, smart, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> Peering I got, through Windows. I got like a 1947 Nokia. Yeah. Uh, the first the first cell phone ever back in 47. Yeah, they used it to spy on Nazis. Uh-huh. It right. worked. Yeah. yeah. It still does, actually. Actually stolen from a museum. He didn't want to spend the money on uh, I will not purchasing spend a phone. money on things. <laughs> what about these future tech video games we're supposed to be talking about? I will wait until they are no longer future tech. Mm-hmm. They're past tech. They're past tech yeah. video games. Right. Uh, and then I will spend as little money as possible on them or play them for free when they come out with my gold account. Ah, uh, okay. Hmm. Now, uh, Jason, you actually came up with this topic here that we're talking about today. So what is it you wanted to talk about with the, the future tech of video games or the future tech in video games? Well, I wanted to or discuss with everybody, uh, you know, you guys uh, and also the audience right. at home or in their car. Or Feel free to call in any time. They're or typically the, very quiet during the episode. Yeah, the lines are always shot. open. Lines are always open. They stay open, folks. Let's right. put some people on those lines. What were we talking about? You were talking about the future tech and video game. Thank you, Dave, for keeping us focused. You got it. So anyway, the future tech of video games. I'd like to discuss what we know about video games currently. Mm-hmm. The the elite, high-end uh, video games that we are already aware of. You know, I imagine oh, yeah. Justin's probably clued in pretty good on that since he's got so many elitist toys already. Right. And then I'd like to speculate, as we did in the last segment of with Future the, Tech, about cars. what we, yes, with the, the cars, yeah. that was it, uh, about what we expect the video game industry to turn into okay. in 30, 40, 50 years from now. Obviously, it's not going to stop. You know, people aren't going to be like, uh, you know what, uh, 20 years is enough. I'm turned off by video right. games. So it's going to continue to grow and continue to be a big economic factor. So yeah. where will it take us in 20, 30, 40 more years? So okay. uh, what do you what do you know currently, Justin? What do you know about video games right now? What's, what's the highest priced video game you can get? I imagine it's a personal computer of some kind. Uh, you know, I'm not really sure what the highest price well, of just, uh, just video guess. game would be. We don't really need raw data here. Are you, are you, Jason, are you talking about like as as far as highest price, the highest price game or the highest price 
something to play the game on. Like something a, like, like a console? Like a, a console or like a, you know, like just okay. well, I, super I, computers. That I feel like gaming computers are always going to be the most expensive, the, the highest yeah. end. In terms of, you know, mainstream console games, you're right now you're looking at your Xbox One and your PlayStation 4. They're releasing a uh, an Xbox S, I think it's called. It's going to be an Xbox One with uh, 4K capabilities, uh, you know, better sound, better video, all mm-hmm. of that other stuff, faster processors. Mm-hmm. Uh, and PlayStation is going to be releasing something called the PlayStation 4 Pro, which... Uh, apparently will be kind of that same thing, just a higher performance. An, an elite model on the elite console. <laughs> Absolutely. There's also a lot of talk around right now in uh, virtual reality. Have you have you seen any of this, Dave? I've seen a little bit of this, yeah. Uh, and, and of course, I, I, I figured for a while that's where video games were going to go. Uh, we've, we've gotten, I think, sort of to the end of where you can go just on a regular television screen or a monitor or whatever. Without having to get more in depth with it, without having to actually get into the game itself, with uh, with things like virtual reality, and um, you know, until you actually have guys coming in your room with with guns and you know, you're having a little war game, right? Just in real life. I mean, the Hollow Deck does not exist yet, right? But I have seen a lot of this stuff about uh, virtual reality VR, mm-hmm. and uh, there's some pretty interesting stuff out on the market right now. You have the uh, the Oculus Rift, I believe, is what it's right. called. Um, then of course there's the uh, the Samsung VR, uh, which it looks like you essentially put your phone into a set of goggles and let it take you from there. Yeah. That's still uh, pr- pretty interesting. Um, and uh, PlayStation actually released a VR uh, peripheral set just a few weeks ago, mm-hmm. actually, um, where if you have a PlayStation Four and no, you that just buy the peripherals, that's just broadcast uh, slightly offset images to each individual eye to give you a, a bit more depth in the game? is Yes, but also uh, there's a camera that you place on uh, like on your TV stand or what have you in front of the, mm-hmm. uh, the TV, um, and you are given uh, motion controllers that have lights on them, and your VR uh, goggles actually have a light on them as well, so it can detect where you are in the room and your motions, so you are able to um, be more fluid and uh, actually kind of be inside the environment. I think they actually have some pieces where you can plug up the motion controllers in a way to uh, form a gun or a so, rifle so or something like that. So this is kind of like the expansion of, of what, what we had with uh, the Nintendo Wii mm-hmm. and then like the uh, Xbox Connect. Yes. And this is just the, the next iteration of that pretty much is, is putting you even more into the game. I've, yeah, even but further. It, it, it looks- still sounds like it's a bit raw and underdeveloped from what the market is really thirsty for, though. Oh, it, absolutely. I think the, the, the ability to really immerse somebody into a world, we're not there yet. Like the movie Gamer that came out several years ago with uh, Gerard Butler uh, was, I guess, I guess what, we're, what we're really aiming for with, with video games, it's at least as far as uh, shoot 'em up games, mm-hmm. uh, where it basically puts you into the position of this soldier or whatever, what have you. Who's actually there? Actually in the game, and and it immerses you completely. I don't know, I, you know, if you can feel what's going on, and and I assume that would eventually be one more step that would that would be included into. I would agree. How games work now? Current tech I have seen uh, on a lot of the smartphones that have the the camera on the back of the phone, mm-hmm. and they have these apps designed where it basically plays with the camera and. You can go around and everybody that you see is like a normal person, but if someone else is playing the game, then they'll show up as like a target and you'll get oh, like right, a target yeah. reticle and you'll be able to like blast them in the game world. Mm-hmm. And if you accidentally shoot one of the rando people that are just walking around not playing the game, then it deducts points from your score kind of thing. Like, okay. So kind of like an augmented reality. Like an augmented reality, exactly. Oh. Now that's, that's something that they have currently that I feel like could be used very well in the future. The only Absolutely. problem is safety. Uh, mm-hmm. Even with the Pokemon Go, safety has been a huge issue. Oh, yeah. People just mm-hmm. wandering around in the streets and getting hit by cars and, and or, so if, or even driving their cars and, and hitting other yeah. cars while playing while exactly yeah. so it's i get why it's why it's not 
stepping into the real world too hard mm-hmm. because of all the safety issues. Because, you know, as soon as one, two, three kids die in potholes or on the streets because they were playing some augmented reality game, then yeah. that's, well, that's one, two, three more kids than should have died playing a video game. Absolutely. So, I mean, I, I think when you're looking at augmented reality, uh, there's also a kind of behind uh, in technology factor in there as well, whereas right now augmented reality requires you to carry around a phone in your hand looking at a screen. When the technology eventually catches up, I feel like in the future, mm-hmm. talking about future tech, that you might have um, glasses similar to – Yeah, like like glasses that will have a, a heads-up display on them where right. you can play games. But I also think that those would be incorporated in a lot of ways with everyday technology where – Absolutely. It wouldn't just be for video games that you have these glasses on. Yeah. Kind of like, uh, like Google Glass. Right. Only out. better. Right. And I think that you will you can see in the future, you know, jumps of augmented reality becoming a bigger part of the gaming world. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I almost think that in a way that and virtual reality are going to be the future. And you'll, you will be able to find yourselves in a, a holodeck-like situation where it's basically just a room in your house that is designed for you to be wearing your augmented or virtual reality glasses on. and There's already sort of a, a an entertainment room in pretty much every household in America yeah. so far. Like, if, if you have an extra den space or whatever, like, your living room is sort of where you have company and then there's another space. Some people call it the man cave or... Mm-hmm. Or whatever, but it's an extra space that you have. That space is slowly going to progress into these VR dens. Right. These places where you can move about and you're going to have, instead of surround sound systems, you're going to have these little VR detectors in every corner of your room. And you're going to be able to like move around and pretend mess with objects and stuff that you see but aren't really there. Uh and that's that's pretty exciting. I think being able to manipulate worlds like that right from your own personal space, especially if it becomes interactive with other people's right. personal space, like a, a Sims or whatever, where you can go knock on their door and go look around in the little personal space they exist in. The augmented reality, I, I actually see that in the future becoming more than video game. I see augmented reality, as soon as we get the, the processing, the microprocessing to interpret data uh, from spectacles, like Justin has mentioned, uh, where it is constantly viewing all of the things that we see forward, it could start analyzing data at such a high rate of speed that it could give us warnings about dangerous situations that are approaching us, broken glass that we might not see in the dark, but it might be able to pick up mm. and it could flash on your screen and warn you like broken glass three feet to the right and like flash it as a little indicator in your your goggles. Yeah. You know, it could analyze the speed of oncoming vehicle and be like, don't go right now. Sorry, dude, you ain't fast enough <laughs> to make it. Like, I hate to be blunt and your, your VR goggles at the same time, but <laughs> you are going to get splattered. Don't go. Right. It sounds to me as though the military would have something like that well before we get it. But that's the case with everything just about. Now, not only that, but I, I can see this going in in a even different right way, where uh, you you know you're wearing these goggles or glasses or whatever they are, and and you walk into a store or whatever, and it and it, as the the glasses pass over any product, it gives you information on that product. It gives you the price of that product or something. You don't have to look at a price tag. You don't, it just pops up in in your view possibly to the extent where you could even buy it directly from your glasses. And then it just gets sent to your house. Yeah. You not even not even have delivered by or drones. Anything. Uh or even just, you know, you just take it off the rack, you 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 accept the terms of agreement or whatever and 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 now that's yours. You wouldn't even need it, someone in the store except to just stock the shelves yep. at that point. And you have evidence of your purchase because, you know, it it's was right all there right there on your glasses yep. like now I feel like the, these ideas that we're coming up with, I, I feel like I've seen a lot of this in movies, and so I I I, I enjoy watching a lot of sci-fi movies. Absolutely. And stuff. Uh, but so you have things like uh, I think it was Minority Report. 
kind of it was was sort of the opposite. There was like targeted advertising in that, not not so much in in your face, but it was all around you. As you walked through a scenario, it recognized you and right. gave you your demographic of of advertising. Exactly. I saw a uh, television show called Black Mirror where they do a kind of it's a sci fi anthology thing, um, and there was uh, one or two episodes where they kind of imagined it as a. Uh, you know, almost contact lenses that you're putting in. And uh, there was this one particular episode where there was a an add-on that you could buy and get implanted in you that allowed you, allowed you to record your memories and play them back and store 100% of your memories and go play back every tiny insignificant moment yeah. that you experienced with your eyes. And it was a very interesting idea. I'm not sure how something like that would work, but it, it's... It seems like there's a, a lot of implications when you start talking about true augmented reality and truly right. seeing something through someone's eyes with a smart device all of the time. Yeah, it seems like uh, not only military would get that, but it seems like they would develop that for intelligence agents. Uh, that would be what I would spend the billions of dollars on is, is go ahead and, and augment intelligent agents so that they don't even have to walk into a scenario wired that they have a microchip processor contact lenses or whatever that is recording every single detail of everything that they see and giving them feedback information on their surroundings. But, you know, who knows how far away that is. I don't actually know what our highest processing speeds are right now, but I imagine they probably pale in comparison to what you would need to run a system like that, especially with more than a single operator. Right. You know what's funny? We've we've gone completely away from video games now. <laughs> oh yeah, we certainly did. <laughs> we started this off with future Tangents. tech and video games, and now we're we're just at future tech. And how crazy is that going to be? All right, so uh, like well, video virtual games. reality versus <laughs> augmented reality. Which would you rather see completely fleshed out and made real in a video game? In a video in a, game in a scenario. Video game scenario. I think of I think virtual reality would be really cool. Although I I feel like it's with virtual reality. It takes it. It becomes very solo. Right now, with the way we have games and stuff, you can sit there with a buddy, you can play a game together, and everything. But with virtual reality, I feel like it kind of takes you away from that a little bit. You don't have that camaraderie that you get with somebody who's sitting right next to you. You can high five as you know we do something great. You can cuss them out when they when they you know team kill you or whatever. Imagine if you were inside the video game world and you could turn and look and see them Tron in the video style. game world with you, like. I mean, if the cameras were advanced you enough and they were feel their capt- high five, but yeah. you could high five them. I mean, even if they were in the same room with you, it would prevent you from running into them and stuff. Right. And depending on how good the three D cameras are or whatnot, they could completely form a one hundred percent three D model, and they could look just like your friend. Oh, that, that's true, and that and that's all well and good, but I still like having that. I, I don't know. I, just, I prefer just having that that actual experience, the actual reality, if you will. Absolutely. Yeah. What about you, Jason? Augmented reality or virtual reality in video games? In video games, I would say virtual. And and I actually agree with Dave. I do uh, see that as being... I mean, we're already breaking away from society and, and becoming like an every man is an island. Every man, woman, and child is an island. So we we might as well em- embrace that as far as video games are concerned and and build that entertainment room and then rather than me playing xbox by myself well i'll be in my virtual world and i'll actually you know i'll be able to talk and and high five like like we were talking about only you know i I won't have the sensation of touch but i can get over that all right so i mean for me i think it would be 100 percent virtual reality i love the idea of immersion and of uh just being there like as a form of escape. So my vote would also go virtual reality. So virtual right. reality so is what we're looking, looking forward virtual to. Virtual reality in the, in the video games of the, of the next few, few years or decades or what have you. Even though I do want these crazy uh, spy military goggles that we've come up with that interpret all this yeah, world all data <laughs> and just give me constant feedback about all this interesting stuff that I don't have to do the calculations on anymore. It can just tell me. All right. Well, coming up on Talkie Box, we're going to talk about dreams and kind of get into why we dream and what we dream about and some crazy things about those right after this improvised commercial. 
Good evening, good evening. My name is Vladimir Putinov, and I am here to sell you corpses. I just want to, everybody to come to the corpses warehouse down on 5th and 9th Boulevard. And what you will do is you will go to the back around where the dumpsters are. Okay, because the sign is very hard to see. It's, it's in the back. Uh, it says corpses. And we sell uh, trees uh, and shrubs from Mother Russia and from Bosnia, Herzegovina and from Serbia and from the Ukraine. Even though we're not real happy with the Ukrainians right now, we still sell the trees and their shrubs. Uh, they're telling me maybe I should take more time with the trees and shrubs. No, that's wrap it up. Oh, I don't understand. Uh, anyway, uh, corpses in the back, uh, uh, Fifth and Eighth Boulevard. Uh, ask for I Ivan. Yes, corpses. <laughs> <laughs> Is that 30 seconds? I don't fucking know. Uh, well over. Right. Corpses, everybody. Corpses, corpses and Ivan. Ivan and something. corpses. Was that his name in the beginning? Nope. Okay. Nope. nope. No, it was Vladimir Putin Vlad, or something. It. I don't know. Uh, as for Ivan. Don't ask for don't me. Don't ask for Vlad. <laughs> don't ask for me. I don't work here. I don't. I don't I, I, damn it. That would have been good. Uh, Oh, dreams. We're going to talk about some dreams. Yeah. Now, uh, Jason actually brought this up, as Jason does a lot of our, our topics. He brings them up because uh, we don't come up with any other topics. But dreams, why do we dream? That's a great question. Absolutely. Here's my theory on why we dream. I'm ready. Uh, we go to sleep at night or whenever we go to sleep. That happens. Right? Whenever. I agree. We go to sleep and you basically kind of just shut down. Your Most of your body shuts down except for a few you know, life support systems. Your brain gets bored. Your brain just starts going through random shit, and it's going to show it to you, your consciousness or subconsciousness, inner consciousness. And, your dream. And that's exactly what dreams are. It's just your, your brain just being weird and like, you know what? What about this scenario? What, why don't we think about this for a second? But, okay, so we thought about that before. What if we put this person in that scenario, and now you have uh, a weird boner about it? Dreams. Jason, your theory? Uh, well, why do we dream? I mean... We're not the only thing, right? Like dogs dream. We we see them like twitching their little paws and yeah. and 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 making their little puppy sounds and stuff. And so we we're thinking like they dream. So like it's not just humans, but it is more of the the higher evolved animals that seem to dream. I I don't think that your your super low species like your I don't know maybe possums dream. You know I don't really know. I don't know. This but is awfully species to talk. Yeah, it, right. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of a humanist. I do like being on top. Uh, anyway, <laughs> what, what were we talking about? Talking about dreams. Talking about dreams. Yeah. The reason that we dream, I think, to talk to God. I think that it's our downtime, that our body is resting and repairing itself, and our brain is going through all of the data that we pulled in throughout the day all of the data that we had to ignore because our brain pulls in so much more data than we can actually fathom in our our thoughts and it's going through all of that data and it is downloading it to god directly into this giant network of consciousness and so that is what dreaming is is us taking a moment to share ourselves and our experiences even those we can't comprehend with something greater than us. Okay. Well, that was very existential and not funny at all. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. You nailed it. Ball's in your court. All right. Uh, why do we dream? You know, I'm, I'm leaning a little bit more with Dave on this one. I think that uh, we have a lot of... Um, a lot of activity going on in our brains all the time. We have a conscious and a subconscious. And like Jason said, to your point, I think the brain is pulling in massive amounts of information at once. And it's there's nothing else for it to do. So it's just running through thoughts. And we kind of go in and out of those thoughts and experience them as events because it's our brain building these scenarios for us in hypotheticals or in just really random weirdness uh and uh that's how our time passes while we're asleep okay yeah so like we've, we've all had some really weird dreams you got you have a really weird dream that you could share with us today and, and tell us like uh 
the weirdest dream that you can you can remember having. Oh, that's a tough one. So, yeah. We don't always remember a lot of our we, dreams. We don't remember a lot of them, and sometimes they don't stick around for very yeah. long. I know I've had some some really strange dreams. And I smoke a decent amount of the chronic, mm. and that actually uh, reduces short-term memory, and, and that reduces uh, the memory of dream functions, too. So I don't come back with a lot of dreams unless I take a little break. Yeah. Uh, but I, I do have some, some strong ones that I've had, but... I, I defer to Justin. What what were you saying, Justin? Oh, I, I can't think of a specific one off the top of my head. I know there's definitely been some some really strange ones. There has been a, a style of dream that I've had very frequently over my lifetime that uh, it's always interesting and fun to find myself in. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, the, the flying dreams, mm-hmm. the dreams yeah. where you can fly. And uh, sometimes I'll have, you know, telekinesis type powers where I can move stuff with my mind. Those are always a lot of fun. And, yeah. To my knowledge, or to my memory, rather, I've never had a flying dream. Really? Yeah. I've had dozens, if not hundreds, of falling dreams. Ooh. Where you you, know, you startle yourself awake right before you hit the ground or whatever. But I, I cannot recall ever having a dream where I, where I could fly. Now, I'm, I'm with you there. I've, I've fallen many, many times. Mm-hmm. But I'm also, I'm, I'm on the fence here because I'm with Justin, too. I have had one flying dream that struck my nerve so hard, it was so real, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that I legitimately woke up and had to go outside and try. <laughs> like I stood in the same spot that I was in when I had the dream and I, I tried just willing myself up into the trees. Because yeah. my flying was more of just a, a willed levitation. Right. It was more like I wanna be there so hard that gravity is not an issue, that moving there is not an issue. I just started in that direction. Yeah. And I woke up and I tried it. And I didn't just try it once. <laughs> I tried it on multiple occasions just to see if maybe that first few times right. that I tried it wasn't the right time or wasn't a yeah. good enough effort. Yeah, the, now, the, the first two times that I've, I've had this dream, there was always a, you know, kind of a mind control aspect to it as well. Mm-hmm. I. I could grab things with my mind and have them sit my way. Uh, it was it's a very empowering kind of dream. And it's it's one of those things. Have you guys heard of uh, these lucid dreaming headbands that you can wear where there's, there's a means of uh, sending light signals into your eye while you are in REM sleep mm-hmm. that alerts you with the proper training, that alerts you that you're dreaming but doesn't wake you. And allows you to lucidly dream and control everything in your dream. I have actually uh, done lucid dreaming on multiple occasions as a child. I I had a lot of repeat dreams when I was younger. Some of them a little too deep about skeletons of my own personal nature. I don't want to get into those. But there were a lot of combative dreams. I had a lot of dreams that were Red Dawn-esque <laughs> where I would... I would single-handedly be responsible for for freeing my middle school from a communist takeover. And they would be rounding up teachers and students, and I would break free of the group, and I would sneak my way through the school, and I would arm myself, and I would sneak kids out, and I would do all these different special things. Yeah. And often they would go awry. And it would wake me up when I would die or something horrible would happen or I would fail in a mission. And I would think about how I could have done it differently. And I would go back to sleep. And then I would dream it that way. But to, you know, after a certain amount of time of being in control of it, I would lose control again. And it would, you know, a Russian soldier will pop out of a woods and knock me off of my horse. Right. See, I've never been able to jump right back into a dream. And I know there's been plenty of situations where I've wanted to. You know, you wake up and you're like, damn it, that was such a good dream. I'm going to go back to sleep and just think about this, think about this, and hopefully start dreaming it again. But you don't, you don't get it. It just goes away. Well, that's part of the lucent part is that you have control. Like you are, you are slightly aware. You're slightly aware. Uh, And it, and it also helps. There's that moment. Everybody's experienced that moment 
right before you go to sleep. And the best way to identify it is to actually be woken up in that moment mm -hmm. and be like, well, I wasn't quite asleep, but I was in that physical state of absolute rest where I knew I was only seconds from being in full slumber. Yeah. Like, so in that, that gray space. Now to bring us back a little bit to like the weirdest dreams we've ever had. Uh, I did mention I've never had a flying dream. Mm -hmm. I've also never had a nightmare. Really? But the, the weirdest dream I ever had was the closest thing I've ever had to a nightmare. Where I, I, uh, I was dreaming that I was, I was in my bathroom at my parents' house. This was years ago when I had this dream. I was in the bathroom at my parents' house. I was about to take a shower, and I had a thought about what I thought. It, you remember the movie Psycho? Yes. With the, the lady in the shower mm -hmm. and the guy kills her. So I thought about that. However, my young self at the time thought that, that was Friday the 13th, and that it was a Jason Voorhees thing. And so I rip open the shower curtain to see if there's a monster in there. There was not, luckily, until I turn around, and there's Jason Voorhees, uh, and he attacks me. And he's got, uh, he, you know, he slices me right down, right down my chest. I fall to the ground and he runs out of the bathroom. I was like, oh man, that's, that's awful. But then I looked down and realized I'm not bleeding at all. It turns out he didn't have a knife or a machete. He had a red magic marker and just drew a red line down my chest. And I thought, huh, that guy's a pussy. <laughs> and then I woke up. <laughs> And that's the closest I've ever had to a nightmare. And it was the weirdest dream I've ever had in my entire life. That is uh where I, I got I got quote murdered and then it was all just stupid. It just was a red like magic you got, marker. You got tagged. It was like, I a, did. It was like You're a it. gotcha bitch by some, Jason Voorhees. Some some graffiti <laughs> asshole like, in a hockey mask da -da 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 -da. jumped at me. And then, yeah, that was that was my the weirdest dream I ever had. No, if if Jason Voorhees spoke, he would have said "Gotcha, bitch." He would have, yeah, like like in a Dave Chappelle kind of voice. Yep. Gotcha, bitch, and then phew, dipped on out. Yep. You got anything anything weird or? Oh no, the the like flying that? thing was gonna be what I was going to mention, right? Uh, but Justin had a Justin similar. Justin stole your thunder on that one. A similar mm -hmm. dream, so I just incorporated Cow. my dream into his. <laughs> yeah, dreams are. Strange, strange things. Oh yeah. I do wish I was able to to lucid dream a little bit more because I feel like we have that that level of freedom in our dreams. We don't, uh, you know, there aren't any consequences mm -hmm. inside the dream world. And going back to even the virtual reality, it's an immersion into a world that we have more say in. Yeah. And it, it, I think that's uh, pretty cool. Have we seen Inception with uh, Leo DiCaprio? Yeah, of oh yeah, uh, where where it's dream and a dream and a dream and a dream mm -hmm. kind of thing. Like, all right, cool. I just think Leonardo DiCaprio is cool. That actually brings me to something. Uh, I see a lot of things online where people use the the Inception suffix for what, it, and they and you know it's like a, a I can't think of a particular instance right now, but it's a something inside of something inside of something and. And then people say that's something inception, mm -hmm. which is not what that word means. No, at all. Absolutely not. Inception w meant putting something like putting the thought into someone's head, right? As opposed to conception, yeah, or reception. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. That just irritates the shit out of me every time I see that <laughs> line. I'm like that's not what that word means. You're doing this wrong. Yeah. Well, people do words wrong all of the time now. Yeah. Now, as if they didn't do it before. Hashtag donkey booth. <laughs> Anyway, so that, does that bring us to the close on dreams for uh, uh, for today? Let me think about it. Yes. All right. That's it on dreams Don't today on Talkie me. Box. Coming up, we're going to have a Halloween costume conversation Ooh, right after yeah. this uh, this improvised commercial. Take it. Are you hungry for baby chickens and you don't know where to find them? Do you want your baby chickens to last a long time? Come on down to Chicanery. We have all of the baby chickens... Safely preserved in cans, everywhere in all kinds of quantities. I've got your jumbo size baby chickens in a can. I've got your I got your fun size baby chickens in a can. I've got every kind of baby chicken you could ever want. You into a red rooster? I got a baby chicken in a can for that. You want a Cornish game hen? I got a baby chicken in a can for that. Do you want to have enough chickens to last in your pantry for six years? Come on down to Chicanery. I got all the chickens you need. The scannery. God, what the fuck? <laughs> Off the Jersey Turnpike. Uh, oh, man. I want a Cornish game hen in a can. 
<laughs> you know what's sad? You I can think get that you can actually scanner. get that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on down to the cannery. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Halloween costumes. We just had, or about to have, depending on where you are. When, when we decided to record this, you don't know. We could have done this at any point. Halloween is the word I should have said in, in that sentence. For us here on Talkie Box, Halloween happened yesterday. Yes. But for you there on Talkie Box, mm. Halloween happens October 31st. That's right. Pretty much every or, one of them. Yeah. So uh, with Halloween, you have it, typically, you, you think of Halloween, you think of little kids dressing up in cute little costumes. They go out and they get themselves some candy, right? They do a little trick or treating. They get scared by, uh, you know, the guy down the street that, ah. does, that does, yeah, yeah, making that noise. Mm hmm. They give themselves candy. Everybody looks around. Oh, these kids are so damn cute. But it's not just for kids. Halloween's not just for kids. No. We, I know the three of us have, have all had uh, very eventful Halloweens in the past, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes together. Absolutely. Uh, that has happened. And we all love dressing up, and, and sometimes we love dressing up very cheaply. Uh, <laughs> Almost but, exclusively. Yeah. And as adults, we get to mix candy and alcohol. That's right. Ooh. And it doesn't get much better than that. Vodka infused mm, gummy bears. True love. Take take me home. Uh, but you know, there's some really great costumes out there. I've had some really fun costumes that I've done. I think I think Justin and Jason have both had some fun costumes. Jason, tell me about uh, some of the costumes you've done in the past. What were your favorite ones that you've uh, that you've done? Well, I'll start in the way past. Pirate. Uh huh. Uh, I have a pirate soul. Uh, always have, always will. Probably you keep since in a jar on your a pirate on your counter. Ah, uh, well, I actually I keep it buried under floorboards in the closet. Okay. Was, I mean, it's it's an old, it's thing. an old soul. It's an old soul. So it it anyway, <laughs> where I keep it's not important. Okay? okay, what's important is that pirate is great. Yeah, I I love dressing up as a pirate. Big hat, big lapels. You know, swash buckles, mm -hmm. and and all kinds of stuff. Uh, jolly and some Rogers and man. Do I love being a pirate? Now, other than that, when when was that? When when were you the? Uh, when did let's you see. Or is that just your everyday life? I well, when did I stop? All right, I was six when I moved off the peanut farm. So seven, I think seven. That's when you started being a pirate for was Halloween. When I started being no, I was an actual pirate. Oh, okay. Uh, for Halloween, I was still a pirate, uh, mm -hmm. but it's because we didn't celebrate Halloween on the ship. Ah, uh, we were pretty cutthroat. Yeah. So there's no costume involved, is what you're saying. I specifically asked about Halloween costumes, and you, you... I mean, it was a costume. No, no, that was your everyday garb. I mean, but it was still a costume. It was an everyday costume. Like, I would walk around, and people would be like, Ah, great pirate. And I'd be like, yeah, thanks, thanks. <laughs> you seem so ungrateful. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you get tired of, of hearing, you know, like, Ah, they make me dress like this. Yeah. By the way... Boom, and then I shoot him with one of those really old guns that has like a single shot in it. Uh -huh. And it very rarely kills him on the first bullet. And so then they just stand there shocked and bleeding a lot. What, what are we talking about? We were Hall talking about Halloween costumes. Halloween costumes. I also like cowboys. <laughs> um, yeah. well, no, Jason, we're talking about <laughs> Halloween costumes. Uh, not your personal preferences. <gasps> oh, ah, you know what? I'm getting off topic. <laughs> I I still like cowboys though. Okay. Uh, also dressing up like them for Halloween. Okay. Okay. Uh, Justin, <laughs> thank you for that uh, splendid contribution, Jason. And you know I've had some pretty some pretty great Halloween costumes. I've also had some uh, not so great ones. Mm -hmm. Just, you know I think the the worst Halloween costume I ever had. Worst one it was a very lazy year. As adults, we're entitled to our lazy Halloween years. This is probably my worst one. I. Uh, I got some uh, gray sweatpants, a gray t-shirt, a gray robe, a gray hoodie, and uh, some gray socks. And uh, I was the color gray. Very, very unimpressive costume. Mm -hmm. I did not win any contests <laughs> that year um, except for, uh, you know, burning the fuck up. It was very hot. There was a lot of layers. Yeah. And it was just very unpleasant. You, you actually worst costume. You went better than I thought you were. I was shaking. I was over here shaking my head because I thought you were about to say Fifty Shades of Grey, and I was going to be very upset with you. Oh no, that is just terrible. Oh no, that'd be terrible. <laughs> be terrible. No, and I was yet, the color terribly gray. more imaginative than what he actually <laughs> went with. No, no, this is true. This yeah. is this is truth. Yeah, but I'm was, still more impressed with the color gray. <laughs> yeah, the the color gray. Yeah. Uh, probably the best costume I ever had, though, one hands down, Ron Burgundy. I did yeah. Ron Burgundy one year. It was a lot of fun. 
I got some, uh, some of our absorbed. audience may have seen that already. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I got really absorbed into the character. Fell in love with Scotch that night, <laughs> uh, and uh, and had a, a chance date with the floor of my bedroom uh, that later that night. <laughs> did it smell of rich mahogany? Oh, absolutely. Oh, of Good. course it did. Good. No, Good. there's no way it wouldn't have. Yeah, I've had. I I tend to uh, and to vomit with, with my Halloween costumes. I switch between getting really into it or just kind of like I didn't phoning it in. Yeah, I didn't take the time to really come up with something, so I did this. Uh, which is how I think was it last year that I was uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. That which, was a phone in. Yeah, that required the purchase of a bathrobe from Goodwill. Uh, one year I was Clark Kent, uh, alter ego of Superman. Right. Because I had a Superman T-shirt and I just wore like a, a nice shirt and tie over it, and just kind of every now and then just opened the 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 button down shirt and showed off that I was Superman underneath. Right. However, I've had some some pretty intricate ones where uh, one year I was uh, the Crow. Nice. Which that sounds like which a lot actually of... took some 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 time and effort. Uh, the Crow, if you don't know, nineteen ninety four movie starring Brandon Lee, based may he on rest in peace. yeah, May and Brandon Lee. He died making the movie. Uh, the Crow is based on a comic book by James Obar, which was fantastic. Get out there and check it out if you have the chance. Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. Um, I also one one of my favorite ones that I ever did. Actually, several of my favorites. I I tend to dress up as women in. Various situations. It's because you have luxurious hair, Dave. That probably helps. We're talking about Halloween costumes. We are still talking about Halloween costumes. I've I've been a Stay pregnant nun. Uh, I've been a Fanta girl, and I think my very favorite costume I ever did was a Catholic schoolgirl, a la Britney Spears in the "Hit Me Baby One More Time" video. What does Allah have to do with it? Uh, not not much. Everything or every <laughs> absolutely everything. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. So uh, "Hit Me Baby One More Time" is actually a really uh, perverted look for Brittany, and I feel guilty that it turns me on as much as it does. <laughs> Just throwing that out there. Yeah. Well, I look not horrible. As, as no, a I imagine. That, you know, you know, I'm outfit. doing a hard bit of imagining right now. Did Did you take it all the way? Did you shave the legs, oh, or did you? Oh. <laughs> that time I did not. I did you didn't not shave, shave the legs. No. Uh, however, as the did Fanta you take girl, it all the way? I took it all the way. All right. When I did the Fanta girl several years ago, I actually shaved. Virtually my, my, you know, my, from the waist up, I shaved my, my chest, stomach, arms, underarms, and I shaved my, and and after I'd gotten all that done, I realized that my razor was getting very dull and I hadn't shaved my face yet. So I went in and shaved my face. It hurt. Uh, did not shave the legs on that one either. (laughs) Don't you want a fan? That's commitment. I don't think I would have done that. Yeah. That was the last time I decided to shave that much of my body. Yeah. Uh, So. That sounds, uh. Ooh. Yeah, that's exactly what it Ooh. was. It was a hoot. Ooh. Did you get razor bumps all over you? I don't think I did, actually. Mm, that's good. Yeah, I did a pretty good job. All right. Next yeah. time you know to start with the face and buy multiple razors. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I used conditioner as my shaving, uh, like like a shaving cream. Your lube? Yes. Your shaving lube? Shaving lube, conditioner. When you took it all the way? Yep, took it all the way. You used conditioner. All right, you heard it here first <laughs> at Talkie Box. Use conditioner like Dave does as lube. Yep, and take it all the way. And take it all the way. <laughs> Highway to the danger zone. So, you know, speaking of Halloween, right. there's been some uh, some pretty strange stuff going on in the news lately. Yep. Um, Dave, have you heard about these uh, these clowns? Oh, these, the clowns, These clowns yeah. that are terrorizing people out there. They are uh, they're all over the place, it seems. And uh, so people are taking it pretty seriously. The funny thing, I think that... Calling it terrorizing, I'm not sure is even is, is really the right word because from from my understanding, I haven't done a, I haven't looked a lot into this, but from what I can tell, the the clowns are just standing around in <laughs> conspicuous places, and people are losing their minds about it. Uh, the, Jason, the, you, have you heard about any of this? Absolutely not. Are they juggalos? No, maybe they, no. They, they are they are actual. They're 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 clowns dressed up normally in in not necessarily happiest looking face makeup in the right. world, and. Dave, to Dave's credit, I mean, for the large part, they are just standing around in strange places, yeah. just creeping people out, like being in weird, like like parking garages or or it just it, at the edge of a wood line or something around people's houses street or, corners, or street yeah, corners near people's uh, places of uh, yeah, their homes or their businesses, just um, randomly standing out in parking lots. But there are there there is a small group of them that, on top of just standing around in very strange places. 
They are actually uh, wielding weapons of some kind. Oh, okay. And um, at times, following people. Oh, see, that's not okay. Yeah, see, now that, that, that's where the terrorizing level comes in. It, it began last year, I remember, mm -hmm. uh, with these clowns just standing around, some of them wearing really weird and uh, scary face makeup or masks. Yeah. Um, and it seems as though this year they started on that same path, um, but some of these individuals have taken it to another level and are walking around on sidewalks right. with machetes or with, uh, you know, chef knife or... Uh, now this, pistol. This isn't limited to just Halloween. This has been going on for for several months. This, yeah, this this, is, this has been going on for a few months now. Yeah, this started back in the summer, I believe. Mm -hmm. Um, and so people are getting kind of freaked out about. I think some. I want to say some towns and communities have have started putting together little posse's. Absolutely. And and I've I saw I remember seeing a video of uh, a large group of college students kind of getting a group together to go hunt down these clowns. Wow. Um, to uh, to take matters into their own hands and. I saw a video of um, who was it? It was a celebrity who was, you know, basically threatening these clowns uh, and, you know, kind of listing off all the different things that he would do if he found himself face to face with a clown. And he, he more or less said he was going to be taking matters into his own hands, that he was going to be patrolling, mm -hmm. uh, and if he he came across one of these guys, that they they would definitely, you know, they would feel it. Yeah. Uh, who yeah. was feel it? His wrath. It was. Um, Oh, it was a uh, Batman Christian posted a Bale? video. No, no, it was it was Batman. Um, he posted a video uh, about <laughs> hunting down these clowns, mm -hmm. and it, he sounded like he meant business. Any clowns in particular? Or? No, just anyone that was terrorizing the the, the good people of Gotham City. Okay, mm. well that makes sense. I'm unfamiliar with any of the reference material <laughs> you have just used. Um, <laughs> But, right. but for real, are there clowns though? No, yeah, this is no, a real yeah, no, story this that is no, and, and what I just said was also true. This is all one hundred percent, one hundred percent true. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, there are clowns out there terrorizing Dick, Dick people. Uh, uh, there are posse's getting formed, and I did in fact view a video on Facebook of uh, Batman threatening these clowns. Oh, okay, I didn't know about that. That was actually a video of that. Y yeah. Oh, oh, well, well, if it was, it was on Facebook, then that's legitimate. Yeah, yeah it's, it was Batman. Not Christian Bale. Not mm -hmm. Christian Bale. Threatening these clowns. Okay. Or Val Kilmer. Or obviously... It might best, have been Val Kilmer. The best two Batman. <laughs> number number one, number two. R which one was number two? Val Kilmer. Okay. <laughs> what about Clooney? What, what about Clooney? Or Keaton? Huh? Oh. Or West? Oh. None of them? Not gonna... Got nothing? Moving on. Yeah. So, uh... Michael Keaton, really. I, I was just starting a fight. It, it's Michael Keaton. Michael he's, Keaton is... He's, he's the real Batman. He's the real Batman. He, he is the real Batman. I, I was i was just trying to get you guys to start a fight with me, but you didn't. You didn't. And, and I couldn't go on record saying those awful things about Michael Keaton. I had to, I had to clear the air. Okay. Well, now, moving on. All right. Moving on then. What else we got, Justin? I mean, there's there's a, a lot of, uh, of fun things that we could talk about. Um, however... Uh, I am not prepared to speak on any of them. Yeah, me either. No. And when I say I'm not prepared to, it doesn't mean I'm opposed to it. I am simply not prepared. Mm. What about you, Jason? What do you got? Lisa Lampanelli. <laughs> All right. All right. What do you got? Now, she is a comedian, uh -huh. and she does a lot of Comedy Central roasts. Yes, that Co is true. Com com comedian. Comedian. Co com comedian. Com what did I say? Comedian. Thank you. All right. So uh, she's on a lot of the Comedy Central roasts. Yes. And yet all of her jokes seem to be about um, sucking somebody's dick in a parking lot. Now, I don't know if that's just my interpretation of her comedic stylings. Right. Uh, but Michael Keaton is the real Batman. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have laughed when I said that. No. Nope. Because they were just... Two things that didn't co in, they they didn't have anything to do with each other. I just wanted to bring back Michael Keaton because I was done talking about Lisa Lampanelli. Okay. Um, who but else? Apparently, we're not done talking I was about Michael not, Keaton. No, he inspires me. He does. Lisa Lampanelli inspires me occasionally, but it's in different ways. Okay. Um, who else inspires me? Val Kilmer. Clearly. Clearly. Yeah. Um, Matthew Lillard. Matthew Lillard. Yeah. Uh, let's see. God. Uh huh. Um, Spuds McKenzie. Okay, I felt like he did a lot of good work in the dog, famous dog, right, 
commercial endorsement market. I mean, I don't know a lot of other dogs. There was the Yokiero Taco Bell dog. Yeah, the Chihuahua. The Chihuahua. Yeah. Uh, which is a city in Mexico, by right. the way. Now, I don't know which came first, the Chihuahua or the dog, uh, but I'm guessing it was probably the city. That makes sense. Right. I mean, unless it was like like a really rich Mexican that like first bred the mm. Chihuahua and he just owned a whole lot of baronial sort of land, Mexico yeah. style, and was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to name this city after this my beloved breed of dog that I have created. Okay. And there I will sell my chihuahuas and I will raise them and it will be a happy place for my tiny little dogs to eat Taco Bell. All right. Well, that having been said, I feel like we've exhausted all our topics for the evening. Did I take up all enough time? No, not really. Damn it. That's okay, though. Well, that's, uh, that's more or less it Yeah. for the, uh, our first episode of Talkie Box. Uh, uh, I, think it, it's, I think it's only fair if we, uh, if we go out with one more of our uh, improvised commercials okay. from uh, from one of our sponsors. And while we're getting that ready, I'd like to just uh, let everybody know you can check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash TalkieBox. You can also find us uh, hashtag TalkieBox on Twitter. SoundCloud is something. TalkieBox, TalkieBox. Yeah, just, just Google TalkieBox. You'll find us. This commercial, improv commercial, is brought to you in part by Dave. <laughs> Hey there, Jeb here for Handy Cable's Candy Fables. Oh, you guys got to come on down to the farm. Check out these uh, these cables and fables that we got here. Uh, you come down anytime, day or night, 24-7, 365 days out of the year, and get all the fables you can put into your face, okay? You come on down, you talk to Candy. I don't, I don't know where she is right now. She's probably, uh, you know, sleeping this late. Anyway... Come on down to the farm. I'll give you some peanuts. We got boiled peanuts. We got uh, we got some roasted peanuts. That's got nothing to do with the fables, though. We're gonna put those fables into your face. You're gonna love them. And uh, yeah, just come on, come on, get them. All right, that was awful. And <laughs> way to go! <laughs> no, you gotta teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah, I loved the voice. Yeah, and the voice was great. Yeah, you, had, you, you needed a director. I felt like <laughs> you're just an actor out there just swimming around. I didn't really know what my motivation was. Yeah, <laughs> like what am I really selling? Who what the, the hell is a candy this fable? Bitch candy. Yeah. <laughs> Damn it. No, it's not okay to use derogatory terms about females like that. Uh, candy's a dude today. Today, yeah, I'm telling you, Candy's a dude. I know him, mm-hmm. and I don't like him. Well, that's enough for uh, Talkie Box for today. Tune in next week when we talk about more things that we feel like talking about. Maybe we'll have a little bit more production involved. So, preparation. Uh, so here from Shattermere Sp- Studios, this is a good night from Justin. And Dave. And Jason. Have a great night. Talkie Box! Hashtag Talkie Box. So, Dave here again. Uh, that Everything that you just heard was the full episode for this week of Talkie Box. However, there were parts that we just felt weren't awesome. They weren't really up to what I guess we would consider our standards. However, we left it all in there because that's the kind of people that we are here on Talkie Box. I just kind of wanted to leave you guys with something a little bit more than that. So here's a clip that uh, is kind of behind the scenes thing. Uh, just kind of a special for you guys. I hope you enjoy it. I should point out that it's probably not really safe for work. Or your kids. Anyway, here you go. So the other day, Jason and I were were going out. We were just night out on the town, and uh, we decided we were going to uh, go to a strip club. Well, I decided I was going to go to a strip are club. You, are we doing the show right now? And uh, I I came down. <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. We 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 <laughs> came we're, down. We're doing test material. And uh, and we, we we get to one place, and Jason all of a sudden is getting like really nervous, really mm-hmm. apprehensive. I don't know what his deal is. And I'm like, come on, man, let's just go inside. Well, well we, we got should... stopped at the front door, yeah. and uh, they they looked directly at Jason and stopped him specifically. And uh, Jason told me a little story about it, about like why he wasn't allowed in this particular strip club. And, I mean, it's, it's a really wild story. You'll have to hear it from him. Well, um, <laughs> there's this... Every <laughs> Thursday, right... Is, is what they call Nickel Thursday. And it's a time where you can get shots at the bar for a nickel. But you have to be a VIP gold member. You have to be in like high standing with the club. Still an incredible deal. It's an incredible deal. Uh, so I had been going to the club repeatedly for a long time. And 
and I got to know everybody and I sort of, you know, got myself invested in the club. Which is understandable. Uh, and, and well, eventually the club owner, he got these real quirky tastes, right? He started getting in girls that, that were all about, you know, doing weird things with their vagina. Uh, one girl shot pool uh, using only her vagina, like handled the stick, handled the bridge and the stick at the same time. Uh, I mean, she scratched a lot, but that's... that's <laughs> damn it. God damn it. <laughs> you can't fucking pause it. Shit. So there's your little behind-the-scenes tidbit from us here at Talkie Box. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you enjoyed the show. Please uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and subscribe on our YouTube channel. We really appreciate it. Appreciate everything you do, you guys do for us. Y'all have a great night from Talkie Box.